Hi there, I'm Rebecca and a really warm welcome back to my channel, Pumpkin Becky. In this week's video we're going to kind of fast track through most of my trees as I try and bring them into the greenhouse for winter and we will stop and have a chat about some of the notable entries. Let's get started. So this week's work is very much like last week's. We're going to be going in and weeding, removing any dead leaves and just having a little look at any of the trees that we've particularly looked at during the year. You might remember my little beach that I am working on to turn into a really cute shoheen. It's actually really starting to thicken up quite nicely now. I, I feel like we're getting somewhere with this one. So let's do a quick weed. Where the weeds have left gaps in the soil, I'm just backfilling with some more Akadama pumice and lava. And then I'm going through the tree and just removing any dead, crossing or damaged branches. I'm also looking to reduce anything that really extended over the late summer that I didn't prune back earlier. And I'm double checking junctions to make sure there aren't more than two branchings happening at any point. I am putting some wire on the tree. <sighs> to be honest, looking back while I'm editing, I'm not 100% sure why <laughs> but there you go um, actually the biggest bit that concerns me is the way the top two branches separate into it's almost 180 degree division um, I think really they ought to be closer than that Although looking at the tree as a whole, maybe as we see it now, that branch going out on the right hand side, maybe we don't need it. Maybe I should use the what's on the left hand side as the, the leader for the tree. I know that for a shoheen, this tree is going to be too tall anyway. So I can consider that some of these branches are just sacrificial, they're part of the development process and I suppose putting movement into them now rather than leaving them to get straight and lignified is better. I have marked the front of the pot just with a little bit of um, stick, you can just see that here and that hides the trunk chop at the back of the tree. Now we have one of my maples, this is Skeeter's Broom. And I'm actually quite pleased with how last year's growth developed and how I managed to keep on top of the, the branching and extension of the buds. You can see 
even the later growth, the internode length is quite nice and compact. There's a knob here that I'm just removing with my concave cutters and another little bit and then my brain starts ticking as I look at this in the viewfinder of the camera and I start to think do I even need that branch? It's very thick it's the same thickness as the piece of branch below it so it's not adding anything to the taper Hmm, I could take it off. Maybe I'll just prune everything around it to begin with. and the decision is made. Off it comes. And now I'm looking at this branch and thinking, oh, that's very long and very straight. Not much going on at all on it. But I'll do a little bit of tidying up, just trim some scarring, add some callus mate to the cuts, let those heal up over winter and then we'll see where we stand in the spring. There's a couple of little branches that missed me and we've got two buds and then a centre one that is extended off. I'm going to prune them both back. They are unfortunately the same length so that means we don't get any nice staggering but <laughs> it will help add variety and maturity to the tree but that will have to come in the tree's future. The next tree is my Zelkova which I bought from eBay When I bought it, the crown had got very out of scale and it needed to come back so that it could be rebuilt and that is now causing me some entertainment. I'm having trouble resolving the, the cut point and trying to lift a branch to make that become the new top. Um, I don't know whether it's because the rest of the tree is so straight and then suddenly this has created quite an angle whether that's just throwing my my eye a bit what I might do in the spring is actually pot this up into a bigger pot try and get it growing it does have really nice tight little zigzaggy growth the branches are, are really sweet and when they're in full leaf I, this tree looks great but <laughs> when it's like this with its leaves off it is problematic the trunk hasn't really developed very much the branches are well, the thicker ones are very much of a similar thickness. They're quite straight. <laughs> There's one view that hasn't really got any branching on it, which I suppose could be the front, except I have cut the top of the tree off and the new leader is on the opposite side. <laughs> so I might have to have a think about that. 
I think potting it up will encourage it to grow and that will give me more options going forward. For the moment it's been almost in stasis with the amount of growth it's put on. It's just getting the same treatment as the other trees, just a nice clean up, get rid of any dead stuff, any crossing branches. And I am taking some of that summer growth back quite a way to try and encourage more branching. I popped some wire on to try and add a little bit of movement to the branches. They are a little bit brittle this time of year so I was limited in what I could do and in the end some of them just looks like I put some wire on and left it there. But I hope that the small amount of movement I managed to get will be enough. I've reduced the trunk chop point again where it's compartmentalised and I'm just adding a little bit of calismate to that point and to any other cuts I've made. Just for a little bit of added protection. As with all these trees this is coming into the greenhouse for winter so it shouldn't struggle too much. The next tree we've got is the second little leaf lime that I own. It was bought as a starter tree from Corin Tomlinson. We saw its twin in the previous video. This little tree did fall foul of the shrew or mouse that decided it was hungry over winter one year and ate most of the bark off the entire diameter of the trunk. Thank you very much. It's had cut paste on it to protect the the opened area of trunk. And it has been forming some nice callus. Here I'm just reopening the leading edge of that callus so that I can pop some cut paste onto it and let that continue to roll rather than stopping where it is. Hopefully I can reduce this a little bit more.
and just as before we're removing any dead branches, crossing branches, little stubs and then applying some callus mate over those cut points. I'm enjoying this little tree, but um, just hope we can get past that bark damage. Of course, the other option would be to completely air layer the whole thing off the rootstock. Mm, that might happen. This is a little silver birch sapling that uh, self seeded into one of my pots. And you will see that I have also still got the little seedling that planted itself into, yeah, it might have been my Chinese quince, not quite sure. But in the spring, I removed it from whichever tree it had joined forces with and popped it into the side of this pot. I've unwired this silver birch and I'm now in the process of rewiring it. I've decided that the current leader, I don't want it to be the leader, I want that side branch to be the leader. So I'm using the wire to try and manipulate that branch into a, an apical position. This is some decently thick wire but it's having some trouble holding the shape in place. Let's, let's see how we do. If I try and overbend the shape and let it relax back into what hopefully will be the new shape, then that's fine. That will have achieved what I needed it to achieve. It certainly isn't cracking or splitting at all. I'm popping some really, really fine wire onto the side branches just to start to give them some shape, even though they are so tiny. I just thought better to get some shape into them now rather than wait for them to be long, straight things with no movement at all. And that stub you can see wrapped in wire is just helping me get a little bit more length and a little bit more leverage to bring that new leader up into position. So I will leave that stub in place, let it compartmentalise like all the others and then I can take it off safely. One of the last videos I filmed last year was of this, my Juniper Rigida. It's a needle forming juniper rather than a scale forming. And I did a little bit of dead wood work and then tried to whiten the dead wood. 
as you can see it didn't entirely like it and that's probably because I don't know anything about live veins and those sorts of things and I lost a couple of other little side branches nothing too drastic and I certainly gained more new growth than I lost old growth I thought it might be quite fun though to strip some of these branches back remove the bark from them and just carry on making the deadwood section and maybe oh, <laughs> maybe increasing the deadwood on here let's give it a try Now this tree is a hornbeam that I bought from a garden centre, there is a video about it. It was an absolute bargain, it was one of those sort of forgotten reduced trees at the back of the garden centre and I could tell from the leaf shape that it was a hornbeam and it was beautiful and tall and willowy and then some of you said you should do an air layer fine I'll do an air layer and this is the bottom half the original part of the tree I have pretty much just let it get on with life I haven't done very much to it at all it was obviously quite stressful for it taking an air layer and then removing it so yeah I just kind of let it live its life for a bit It did receive some damage from probably a shrew, possibly a mouse that got into the greenhouse one winter. It wasn't last winter because I didn't bring it in last winter. And there's a quite a big section of bark at the bottom which is missing. That's this area here. And it comes all the way around here. This ridge area is the the sort of callus tissue it's put on. You know, everything underneath that is without bark. 
but other than that it's done pretty well it's um it's had some good growth it's got lots of buds on it uh, what I did was just sort of let the top carry on going to try and drive some energy through it it had a good year it did put on lots of growth and I have managed to get it to do what I wanted it to do which was to generate lots of buds quite nice and tight in so that we we start to actually get a tree rather than stick with some leaves on the end so this is the cut where the air layer was taken from and you can see it has compartmentalized really nicely it would be nice to start taking that down so let's just see how tough this is quite tough <laughs> or I'm just really weak it's, it's one of the two And this isn't an operation I have to do in one hit, it's something that I can just keep chipping away at as the years go by. <laughs> I'd like to get the centre down a little bit but it's actually remarkably hard. I'm just skimming off the surface I might have to wait for that to toughen up again before I can carry on with that but that's fine there are a few bits of growth that have gone a bit foxy so they're probably dead. For example, this branch, you can see we have a nice live bud here, but everything beyond it has gone this much tawnier color. I'm gonna come back to a little way before that. So I've just left a little stub on there that I can remove later. And yes, the pot I had it in split, so I have temporarily put the whole thing into this pond basket. And who knows, next year it may actually just get potted up into the pond basket. Considering the mouse or whoever it was took off two thirds of the diameter of the trunk in bark, I'm surprised this poor thing is still going. So good for it and I am putting a little bit of callus mate onto this top section here it doesn't look like much now but who knows <laughs> especially as we start to be able to work on the roots and find out what on earth is left of the bark. Yeah, let's see what next spring brings us. And here is the air layer. <laughs> it's stuffed with buds. It's a really nice soft shape. It hasn't got a huge amount of taper, but it, it's starting to show a little bit of variance as we come up the trunk 
I did pot it up this year into a slightly bigger pot and do you know what actually I might go up another size in the spring because it has really helped it it's packed with buds so again I'm going to keep the work on this really light I'm just going to remove a couple of stubs and pretty much leave it at that actually if any of these leaves want to come off I will do that And I actually think that's where I'm going to leave the video for today. I've worked on a lot of trees, some on camera, some not, and I'm definitely losing the light. So I think I've done a good day's job and tomorrow is editing in the warm. Well, hopefully I won't need a hot water bottle stuffed down the back of my trousers. <laughs> oh, it's so glamorous being a YouTuber. <laughs> Right, that's it for this week. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, share and subscribe to me here on YouTube. And until next time, bye.